what I want to do is to give you guys a game plan that will work in competitive situations against people who know what they're doing with Kimura. Um, the easiest thing in the world is just to go out on video and just show some moves. Here's a certain kind of Kimura and here's a defense to it. Um, that works well at white belt level. When you're first starting off, you don't have much direction, that, that's fine. At world championship level, it obviously stops working because your opponent knows damn well what the basic counters to the moves are and they've got four or five steps ahead of you on that. So um, you need to go further than this. You need to start thinking conceptually about getting out of submission holds rather than just memorizing a, a small set of moves which only cover a small set of contingencies. So what I want to do is give you guys a conceptual approach to defending Kimura. This is a layered approach where you start to see Kimura for what it is. It's a series of events over time, each of which becomes progressively more threatening to you. Okay, that's very important, so I'm going to say it again. Every Kimura is a kind of set of sequences where each step of the sequence becomes more and more threatening to you until you end up in situations where your hand's behind your back, your head's completely controlled, he's got a figure four, and it's done. Okay, your arm's breaking. Um, the first step in that layered approach is the wrists. So if I'm in Placido's guard, the first thing he needs to do is to seize control of my wrist. We know that when someone gets a hold of the wrist, they can only exert so much control. There's only so many directions he can cover with wrist control. As soon as I identify what the weak direction is, he grabs it, I go in the direction of, the, of weakness, okay? So here, so I can't, make sure not, I can't go into him, it's blocked, but I can easily go away. So when he sits up, it's done, okay? Um, if we're down on the floor, and he's side control, and he seizes my wrist, I can use my legs to peel it off, okay? Every time I feel the threatening grip, I just elbow skate directly into the move. As soon as I feel the wrist come in, and it's gone, okay? If I'm behind someone, wrist control is a little different. He seizes the Kimura, Partner, Kimura, and from here, you come in and you seize the wrist. Take it away. So the first light layer of defense is always at the wrists. Whenever I feel him grab a Kimura, if he's if I'm behind him, I will grab the other wrist. If I'm in front of him, then I use directionality, but I'm always defending at the wrists. If I'm underneath them, I'll probably have to use some kind of elbow escape. Okay. If I'm in a T Kimura situation, then I'll probably have to use some kind of rotation and expose his wrist and snap them off. Okay? But your first layer of defense will always be the wrist, regardless of whether you're in a T Kimura, whether you're behind him, whether you're standing, whether you're on the ground, whether you're underneath him, uh, or in his guard. The wrist is the first layer of defense.